Let's say hello right now to Amanda Carr. What what timing is this? I, it's amazing. Yeah, uh, I think how did I you, how this did before you, this came out. How did you end up in the Wall Street Journal? You know, big article too. It's not like a little tiny little mention. It's a huge eye. This is all the man car. I know. On the back page. Wow. Yeah, it's still sinking in because this came out this morning and it was online uh, last night, actually. And uh, big surprise to me. Uh, there was no pre-copy. Um, Nat Hentoff, who is a, a very prolific writer for, uh, you know, jazz and, and politics, um, uh, was very interested in the new album and uh, was uh, showering me with accolades. And I just never knew that it would it manifest itself like this. And um, I'm still trying to soak it in. It just happened a few hours ago. So I've been driving around in circles in your parking lot for about four <laughs> hours. And, uh, so who uh, did you, uh, who, uh, what show are you going to go on next, you know? Is it going to be I, Leno? I, I really don't know. I've been trying to field some calls, and I actually have a promo person now that's um, booking stuff for me as they come in. I'll be on uh, locally on uh, NECN on Friday morning now, from what I understand, mm -hmm. uh, to perform. Um, and this is, uh, 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 tonight I'm on WGBH, live with Eric in the evening, but that's radio. A um, couple of radio things, and then my record release is at Scholars Jazz Club uh, with my group uh, that's on the CD uh, next Wednesday. I shouldn't say next Wednesday, I should say Wednesday, September 12th, and, in case and we, we should Actually, I'll let you, I'll let you hold this. Oh, thing. okay. This is, this is the, the CD. <laughs> so it's, it's called hold it up soon. Like, soon, me and looking like a kabuki <laughs> dancer here. Yeah, that's... Um, now, th you know, this is really interesting because uh, years ago <laughs> I did a show on, in a Brockton radio station, and uh, when your first CD came out, you came in the studio, sang some songs, and we, and we did an interview. Right. Uh, since then, uh, you, this is your fourth CD now, so you're, you're pretty busy. I'm very busy, especially now where the industry throws everything back on the laps of the musicians um, and says, do it yourself. And so I've become a do-it-yourselfer. And uh, the first CD uh, kind of got popular because of the Jordan's Furniture commercial. Right, I don't do right. you remember they played yeah. that parody on the Gap ad and right. the, with the swing thing. Um, and then I was just... Um, just doing gigs and working, and uh, I went over to uh, Europe and uh, recorded over there and uh, uh, just kind of released the CD because, you know, what else do you do? But it wasn't until these last two CDs that I decided to get a little bit more serious. As you get older, you sometimes that bug gets you and you mm. say, um, I don't want to wing it anymore. And I really had to learn how to do everything myself. I mean, built my own recording studio. My husband engineered the records. We do our own graphics, our own promotion, secured my own distribution, chief bottle washer, take <laughs> out the trash. You know, y you really just kind of learn as you go along. And, um, you know, this is just a real nice plus. And you hope that when something comes out of left field, like an article like this, that you have all your ducks in a row. Because if it's smoke and mirrors and you're just trying to ride on the hype, it falls apart really quick. So it's on a day like this that I'm really glad I've been doing it right, brick by brick, hard work. Nothing beats just going out and gigging and, and building your, your following that way in an honest way, and, and that's kind of the approach I have. So Yeah, well, it's, it's amazing, I mean, to, to, to be on <laughs> in huge. the Wall Street Journal. It's, it's uh, the heaviest thing. It's not much higher thing. than that than, uh, in terms of uh, publicity. Uh, New York Times, Wall Street Journal. Yeah, it's 2.8 yeah. mil million readership, and that's in the print. Um, I've already Googled this just to so it can sink in right, mm -hmm. and um, and it's it's an interesting thing because it's it's read by ev it's translated into all sorts of different languages. It's all over the world. It's the most widely read daily publication, and up until 2006, it was the biggest. And then uh, last year, USA Today surpassed it in circulation, but the readership is a little bit different. I think that's more sound bitey, mm. and this is more of content reading. And Talking about ducks in the row, you're on TV now. If folks want to actually order soon, how do they get a hold of it? Um, you know, CD Baby is a really great place to go, or Amazon. Um, I'm distributed, so you can go to your local Barnes & Noble store, and if they don't have it, they can order it. But online, pretty much any retail store that has online, line, whether it's iTunes and you want to just download one song, which I'd never recommend. I think you should always get an album in, mm -hmm. in its total um, composition. But um, CD Baby is just a nice, clean, easy way to get it, or Amazon.com, or anywhere that you're used to buying online CDs. You do can, you sell them on your own website as well? Um, my website links to CD Baby because oh. they know how to do it right and send it out, and they've got kind of the mechanics already set up. Right. And they're really wonderful. CD Baby, is uh, they, they came around... Um, a few years ago when the industry started to change and fragment, and they just do it right. They're really a great company. So um, my website, amandacar.com, has a lot of other information, but um, I try to make things easy 
on on there. I was going to ask you about writing, and I noticed in here, uh, I don't see your name on here, but I do notice you have some somewhat well-known people, like the uh, person who wrote Soon, uh, George and Ira Gershwin, somewhat well-known. Uh, yeah, I do the American Songbook, and yeah. um, on, on my other three CDs, I do have two originals on each CD, mm. and it just happened the way that this came together that I didn't have the time. I've been, you know, I'm busy doing so many things just to write, and I don't think it should be rushed. It should be something where it's it's something uh, that's um, inspired. And I was so busy trying to schedule everything and put it together and get this thing happening that I just didn't. But uh, the American Songbook is thousands of songs that are the history of, of you know, American music. Mm. Um, and what I try to do is to, to do songs from the Great American Songbook that aren't overdone. And I think that a lot of the, the I'm, I'm not going to say mistakes, but you get, everybody's grandmother and their sister has a CD out now. And mm -hmm. everybody, it's easy to sing the Great American Songbook because the music's so accessible. Um, but I try to do songs that aren't overdone. And I try to find those gems and those jewels that are deep into the songbook that aren't done that often and then try to find an interesting arrangement. And I've been working with these same players for two CDs now over five years. And we're really getting good about um, working together and coming up with creative uh, uh, now, OMS uh, Records is Original Music. That's your company? Yes, it is. Yeah. Uh, OriginalMusic.com is the, and, and it's a record label, and of course, I had to become my own record label, too. And, um, so you're a, you're a tycoon now. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a big tycoon, and if I can, uh, if I have enough money for tolls going into my interview tonight over it, uh, I'll be lucky, you know. <laughs> Well, is, is there a plan maybe in the future of signing other artists to be on the set label? Uh, we have a couple of other artists that we have signed. Um, like anything else, it's an investment in them. So mm -hmm. you have to be prepared to make that investment either financially or time-wise. And it's one of those things that I think that the record label is growing at the rate that we can do the business, just like any other small business. Um, and with situations like this, um, like right now we have a producer that produced my last CDs, and he's interested in bringing in other people. So you, you kind of grow that way where people become more interested, you develop relationships, and as a team, you can grow the label a little mm. bit more. And I think that up until now, it's just been me and my husband and you know trying to do things in the cracks. Well, you actually give credit to people who are actually on this album this time around. Yeah, we're right a group. Yeah, that's a, that's that's a that's a good spot, um, yeah. Mark, because it's 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 one of those things that a lot of people just use quote unquote side men. They put their name on the front, and anybody can hire anybody. I mean, honestly, you could do a CD and have any uh, big name in New York come up and play on your CD if you pay them. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not a hard thing to do to have good names and associate yourself with it. But the difference between this is. I, I, we're a group, and, and I love to develop a group sound, and I like to take the approach where it's not just all about me, and look at me, and these are my side men, oh, by the way. It's, we're, they're really just very much responsible for the sound we've created, and uh, in their own right, they're great players, and they could, um, they're, they're shining stars in their own right. So this is what Nat Hentoff, who wrote this article, hooked on to, is the fact that this is a group sound, and it's so rare nowadays to have somebody doing that um, everybody wants to be like the next big thing and just well, kind of put their own Jazz is kind of up and coming. I, I, I was a big fan of Rebecca Paris. Oh, know, she's years wonderful. Ago. She's wonderful. And, and I, I like the genre, but it, it, it kind of was laying low in the background for a while. Now it seems to be increasing in popularity. It is. And you've got like a different, uh, uh, a, a, a lot of different categories under the jazz umbrella now. Like you've got new jazz and you, new jazz, and there's a lot of smooth jazz. And there's a lot of different types of things that come under the umbrella of jazz. And then you have your hardcore jazzers that say, oh, that's crap. That's not jazz. And then you have people over that side that say, well, yes, it is. And so it's, there's, there's a lot under that umbrella. And there's a lot of room for a lot of different types of music. Um, what I found is on uh, airplay is really important. And the disc jockeys that have the jazz shows all around the country appreciate um, the people that are paying homage to the original craft and the genre. So I'm trying to do that mm. without straying too far. What I want to do is actually let people have a little bit of a listen to some music here. As we, uh, Close your eyes. Uh, toward the end of the interview. Rest your and this is, uh, which song are we going to hear for you? So I think it's the first one on the record. Uh, it's called Close Your Eyes. It's a little buzzy up there on the Very buzzy. Let's pretend that we're both yeah, that's that's right. Right. <laughs> Is that, is that part of the CD? Yes, that's part of the CD. We put that crackling in there yeah, to make it sound that. like an old record. It's really genuine. <laughs> 
holiday. 